Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to uh, take a look at this 5-axis um, wooden handrail. Uh, some of the steps that I took to create this geometry and also machine it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now to start with, uh, what I got from the client was a, a top view and a side view of the part and that's what we're seeing here is a top view and a side view of the part so let me create a layer uh, top view and we'll select this geometry and move it over there and then we'll create another layer called side view select this geometry and then move it over there okay now what we need to do is we need to generate some intersection curves okay and uh, there are a couple of ways to do this as usual uh, but in this case uh, I'm gonna use intersection curves so I'm gonna create another layer and this one's called intersection uh, surfaces I'll make that active alright and from here I'm going to generate uh, some surfaces all right, so we'll get this guy and this guy, and we're going to go ahead and pull these across in this fashion here. Okay. Um, all right, so that looks good. So that's our first group of surfaces, and then the next thing I'm going to do is extrude these other ones on the bottom here and extrude these up. Okay, and what I want to make sure is I want to make sure that these surfaces intersect with each other. And we've done a pretty good job so far. Now, what I need to do from here, because this surface doesn't extend out uh, the same, is I'm going to do another extrude curve for this edge here, but I, I need to change the plane. Sometimes you can click Z and it will switch, but I need to go to a front plane here and let's do this again. Extrude curve, these two curves here. And again, I just need them to extend out so that it intersects, which it does, so we can choose OK. And we'll go back to a top view. So that gives us our surfaces. Now, from here I need to get the wireframe uh, for the intersection of those surfaces. Alright, so we'll do a new layer for that and we'll do surface intersection curves between this and this and this and that. Alright, now we can turn that off and what you can see here is we get uh, these curves and these curves were based on the intersection of those uh, surfaces that we created. Now what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to join some lines. So I'm going to join a line between here and here and here and here and then I'll also do the same thing on this side between here and here and here and here. Um, the reason why I do that is I do want to validate my design and I want to make sure that the measurement for this one here is the same as the measurement for this one here and you can see that they're the same width which is important okay now the next steps uh, really would be generating uh, surfaces to go uh, all the way around the shape. I, I really only need the two edges to generate our toolpath, but I'm going to box it in and I'll use that as my stock when I do my simulation. So I'm going to add another layer here called stock and I'll make it active. And then I do this little trick where I turn the layer off and I make it active. And that way, as I'm generating my surfaces, I'm blanking them at the same time. Uh, which, I don't know, it's something I like to do. So we'll do surface, skin, we'll select this one going that way, this one going that way, this will go from here to there, this one will go from here to there, space bar, space bar, and that one's done. 
All right, now I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom, this one from here to here, this one from here to here, this one's going to go from here to there, and this one from here to there. Okay, so if I turn that layer back on, you can see that we now have the top and bottom. I'm going to turn that layer off, and I need to draw some lines. I'm going to join some lines between here and here, and there and there, and I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Okay, so now I'm going to create the side wall skins. So we'll do this again. Surface uh, skin. We'll make that our active layer. Okay, so we're going to go here to here. Um, okay, here to here. Then here to here. And here to here. Space bar. Okay, now we'll do the other side. And just a couple skins. This actually, once you've done this a couple of times, it's really pretty quick to do. All right. So now we have this whole box. Um, the last thing I want to do is I want to cap off the ends. So I'll do surface planer. I can cap off these these ends here. Oh, I didn't put them on their own layer, but that's okay. All right. So we'll take this guy and this guy, we'll move it over to there, and now we have our model, okay? And that was actually a big part of it. That was, uh, that was most of what we need to do from this point. Um, the next step is to create our job. This is going to be a five-axis machine. It's a head-head configuration, so the rotations are found in the head. I'm going to run the stock wizard. I'm going to choose a solid model for my stock and we'll pick up those shapes. And as far as the zero, um, really this would be built up on a platter and uh, this shape would be roughed out out of a solid block of material. Um, for this case, I'm, j I'm just going to leave the zero where it is. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me at this point. Okay, let's go ahead and blank the stock out. And now, uh, let's throw some, some wood in here. Okay, now for this particular uh, routine, we're gonna use a, we're gonna use a form cutter like this. Um, I've already drawn the form cutter uh, in the software, but we're gonna use a form cutter and we're gonna drive it along the edge of that part, you know, along this edge, staying, um, staying uh, uh, perpendicular to this uh, lower uh, curve, but parallel to this surface, okay? So the way that we do that is using our mill multi-axis. Um, this is a surface-based strategy, and it's parallel to uh, multiple curves, okay? So this is the one we're gonna use. Um, from here, we're gonna go to our tool library, and like I said, I've already set up this tool here, so we're going to grab this tool right here, and we'll choose OK. All right, now, <clears throat> edge curves. So we need to grab the edge curves. The edge curves are going to be right there. That's the curve uh, of the edge of the surface there, so we'll select that one. Drive surface. The drive surface is going to be this surface right here. That's what we're going to drive the tool along. Um, an offset, we do need to use an offset here, but I'll get to that in just a second. Um, tool axis control, this is five axis, be tilted relative to cutting direction. Uh, tilt angle is 90. Tilt side definition is ortho to lower edge. All of that looks good. Um, links, I want to do, or I'm sorry, retracts. I want to get this bumped up a little bit here. Uh, let's make this three. All right, let me uh, just compute this and we'll see the path that we're getting. Now, um, we are getting the path to follow along the surface, but it's taking a lot of steps to get down to the bottom and we really only want it to take one pass. So if we go to edit, 
we can go to this area here and we can say determine by number of cuts and we can set that to one and then recompute that and now you can see we just have the one one path there which is good now some of the other things that I want to do is I want to change like the lead in and lead out so I'm gonna edit this and I will go to my links and I'm gonna use a lead in and I'm gonna use a lead out uh, the lead in I can use the default tangential arc is fine on the lead out I want to use tangent line so it just follows along and let's make this um, three inches okay and then we'll compute that and there we can see our uh, toolpath generated for this now let's go to simulation there's some tools in uh, simulation that I wanted to review okay let's hide the stock for a second so we have our our tool here and toolpath let's show all ops so there's all our toolpath now one of the options we have for here is show tool vectors and then this will show the vector of the tool which is great so you can really kind of see what's going on with it and everything here looks really good so tool vectors is just fine but that's a, a neat little tool that you can turn on so you can really see what's going on uh, toolpath points um, these are showing up yellow right now but these are all the little segments that are making up this path so let's turn that off and let's turn those off now um, we'll go ahead and run this through you can see I will slow it down restart so we can run this through and you can see that we're getting nice uh, nice and smooth motion uh, following up this curve so this actually does a really good job let's show our stock here we'll restart it and we'll run this along and one of the things that we're gonna see is that our tool is actually being offset fully for the part so um, that offset distance that I was talking about we need to adjust that now generally when you do an offset on a compound curve you run into problems but because this is a surface based tool path and the way that we've defined it uh, the strategy and the way that we've defined it we're not going to have that issue at all um, this is close to the value. I don't remember the exact number, but I know I need to move it in. So I'll move that in a little bit. You can see that that's moved in. And then we'll go ahead and run this through our simulation again. And now we can see that we're getting a nice, uh, nice clean cut um, up along the surface. Now, what we want to do is we want to do the same thing on the other side so we're gonna copy this feature and we're gonna paste it uh, for our drive surfaces we'll pick our drive surface for our edge curve we will pick our edge curve and then we'll go ahead and compute this and here you can see our uh, tool path you can see that it's um, uh, not cutting in the the direction like you can see our lead-ins are swapped so we need to um, make sure that we're cutting in the in the same direction actually it's probably it's probably okay I don't I don't with with wood based applications I'm not sure uh, the importance of climb or conventional cutting um, I would definitely want to change if I'm gonna cut in this direction I'm gonna want to switch my lead in uh, to be a little bit different so that we don't have what's occurring here but let's look at um, let's look at what options that we have this has one-way cutting this says climb let's go conventional and recompute it and you can see now we've swapped it so we go this way we go up and that way we go up so both of those are really good um, let's simulate this through again Now another question might be, well, what if I want to take uh, more than one pass, you know, like take uh, a skim pass and a finish pass or something like that. Uh, we can definitely do that with this uh, particular strategy. You can come in to the roughing tab 
you can turn on multiple passes you can say the number of passes you know two and then um, you know what your spacing is and by doing that you know it's going to take more than one pass now you'll notice that when you do uh, change that when you've add, added more, more than one pass you can see your um, leads change because now you're not at the start and end you're at the beginning of uh, uh, a second pass so you have to go in and adjust those but that's where that area is done it's done um, under roughing so let's turn that off and recompute now the other side of this part is um, you know there's a, a curve on the top and essentially what I do for that is I place the curve here and I place the curve there and I uh, use the edges to surface it. But this uh, this covers what I wanted to show here today. Again, this is a five axis um, application. This is for a handrail uh, done on a head head configuration machine. Uh, hopefully you guys found this information useful and helpful. Uh, if you have questions or comments, you can always reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this post may, uh, or this video may show up in. Uh, LinkedIn or uh, where, wherever it may be. Uh, if you ha if you have or if you'd like to, you know, get a demo yourself on a five-axis application or a woodworking application or a milling application, really anything that you'd like to see, uh, definitely give us a call up. It'd be great to work with you. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.